What is going on guys, Jack here and welcome back to episode 34 of our Liverpool FC playthrough here in Football Manager 2016. If you missed the last episode as always go check it out, it was in the Champions League against Napoli, it was a pretty action packed game, good result. Today we continue hopefully on with our, our pretty decent form in terms of when we've done live comps, it's not been too bad of late. Uh, we're going to be taking on Tottenham and as you can see they are in third place in the league. So anyway, since the last episode, just two games to tell you guys about, both nil-nil. So I'm not going to spend much time talking about them. The first game, we absolutely spanked Fulham. We did everything but score. And that's kind of been, I guess, the, the tale of the last two games. In this game, we really should have done better. And then in the next game, which was the Capital One Cup quarterfinals, we lost on penalties. A game again, we dominated. We had lots of chances. We just didn't do a lot in front of goal, unfortunately. Lacazette, still yet to find the net. Um, in open play and it's uh, it's it's growing to a concern. I think it's 12 games now he's played in without scoring so it's starting to add up. I guess on the flip side at least we did keep two clean sheets and you can see our defensive record here has been very very impressive for a while but today it will be tested. We're taking on Tottenham and as you can see if we look at the league table here uh, they are in third place. They're actually equal on goal difference with us and points We've scored one more goal than them, so we are in second. Arsenal, top of the league, but they are only ahead of us on goal difference. Uh, Arsenal and Tottenham met not too long ago, as you can see in that game. Spurs won 3-1. However, in the Manchester City v Arsenal game, Arsenal just absolutely destroyed Man City 3-0. So um, it's still ridiculously tight at the top of the table, as you can see. Three teams tied on points. This is a big game for us, really, against Tottenham to maybe... Put ourselves just slightly out of reach of at least Tottenham, if not Arsenal as well, if they were to slip up over the weekend. Anyway, as you guys will notice, it's December time. I did have a little bit of money to spend, as you guys may remember. The board gave me some additional cash. I've now gone out and spent that, so let's just have a look at the players. So, I talked about Barata. He has now got a work permit, the Brazilian goalkeeper. Looks like he'll be a very good goalkeeper for us for 12, no, £10 million. He's only 19. Loads of room to improve. Really good potential. The other players we've brought in, Huisman, who I've already talked about, but I'll just show him again to recap. Uh, we've brought him in. As you can see, he's playing regular first-team football for Ajax. Uh, we've paid £10 million for this guy, but he looks like an absolutely incredible player, and he is only 18 years old. Anyway, there, there is two more players, yeah, two more players to tell you guys about. The first one is this guy, who I'm just going to call Christian. He's another young goalkeeper with a fair bit of potential. I think we've paid £5 million for him. Yeah, £5 million with a few extra clauses that could take it to 6.5. But um, yeah, we've signed him from River. I'm pretty happy with him as a signing. Again, he's just a goalkeeper prospect who might come good for us. With the money that we had, I'm continuing to invest in youth. He looks like a pretty decent goalkeeper and... He has some potential, so I thought we'd, you know, spend some money to get him in. The only other player I've brought in is a player who will actually play in the first team. And it's this guy who, his name's George. I believe it's Jorge in Spanish, which I guess is how it's said in Brazilian too, because Brazilian's Portuguese, kind of. I'm not sure. I might double check this. I'm pretty sure it's Jorge. Maybe we could just give him a really boring generic name like Fred. Or well, I don't know. It, it just seems George. He doesn't look like a George to me. I mean, there's not much to tell, really, is there? Because it's just the silhouette. But this guy, he's a left back. We've brought him in for 12.75 million, which you know might seem like a lot. It's about nine million up front with a few extra clauses. I think there's three million pounds if he pays plays ten times for Brazil's national side. I've really brought him in as a really versatile left back. He looks like an incredible player. You can see he was only earning four and a half thousand pounds uh, at Flamengo, where we signed him from so he didn't have massive wage demand he's just going to be an absolutely fantastic backup fullback for us to have doesn't seem to be the most ambitious player in the world obviously his wage demand's not too crazy and a, a hefty fee paid for him but he did get a work permit and I think he's just going to be a really useful resourceful left back to have at our disposal Oh, actually, there's one more player, actually. William. So we've got William and George, both Brazilian left-backs. This guy we've signed from, uh, is it Cruzeiro? Uh, and as you can see, he's a quite a good player. He can play almost right back. We might train him to play there too, but he's got some potential. Not the best player in terms of current ability, but we've only paid £4.5 million initially. So pretty happy with that transfer too. So anyway, I guess we'll have a quick look at our squad, just review some performances, because otherwise this is going to be a slightly shorter episode. 
But looking at it here, you can see players fairly fit for today's game. I've given a lot of them rests after we went to extra time and penalties against Swansea. It's fair to say we had a fair few tired legs in our team. Looking at it here, if we sort by goals, you can see that Sturridge, top goal scorer, of course, still out injured, out for between six and seven weeks. To be honest, he cannot come back soon enough because his lap uh, kind of his goals are what we're lacking right now. Elsewhere in the team, Mbolo, Goetze and Lacazette, you know, they've got a decent amount of goals between them, but given the amount of games they've played, especially kind of Lacazette, would like to see a slightly better return from him. Mbolo's done fairly well considering he's only started seven games and come on off the bench ten times. In terms of assists, fairly spread throughout the side, but Klein and Moreno right up there. The fullbacks really key in our build-up play, although... It's fair to say that our assists come from pretty much anywhere, Firmino and Coutinho with a handful each. If we look at the average ratings, you can see Storage really been the standout player for us. Elsewhere, defensively, our defenders have been superb. I talked about the clean sheets we've had. Kurt Zuma, Klein, Sacco, Moreno have been great. Um, Coutinho starts today. He's not 100% match sharp, but his condition's back. You know, he's had that injury which he was out for a little while with. If we look here, strained knee ligaments. It's been a recurring injury. He's had it twice this year so far. I'm hoping it's been put behind him now and he's really going to be able to crack on with his football. Um, so, yeah, I didn't want to rush him back too soon, but for today's game, I think we're going to have to play him. I mean, all in all, the team's getting there in terms of fitness. We have still got those injuries, the long-term ones in Sturridge, Barboza and Cataldi, and, of course, Mignolet also out with his broken arm. He's only out for three to four weeks now, so he's coming back fairly soon. Consigli's done okay. Obviously, he's not conceded in the three games that he's played, if you include the sub-appearance last episode against Napoli. And, um, yeah, I'm hopeful that he can put in a good performance today against Spurs. So anyway, let's get into today's game. It's going to be a fairly big one against Tottenham. Following on from this game, as you can see, we have got the Barcelona game, but we've already qualified for the next round of the Champions League, so I'm not going to live come that one. I think the next games I might be back for might be the Chelsea and Manchester City games. Maybe we'll do a double header there. We'll kind of see how things kind of fall together. We have got Everton in the meantime, but given the fact they're in 10th and given how many commentaries we've done so far this season, I think it'd be better to go on a nice little run without a commentary, especially if we're going to go on a Champions League run and um, yeah you know just get some games under our belt but to be honest we've been performing very well looking at it here we are the favourites to win hopefully we can use that to our advantage it's going to be a really tight game of course uh, Spurs as good as us really they're right up there why have I just asked my assistant to take the team talks I did not mean to do that I did not mean to do that can I can I rescue the team talk maybe I'm going to tell the players I've got faith in them. Okay, we might be able to rescue it. Why did I ha click on it? Ask Assistant. Okay, anyway, let's get into today's game. Just a quick look at the Tottenham side. Loris, Walker, Alderweireld, Dyer, Ben Davis, Valaho, um, or Valero even, Chadley, Berardi, Vasquez, Depay, Berahino. They've got a few different players perhaps to Spurs in real life in the final third, but hopefully we can put in a good performance against them. We have a chance here. Ball whipped in, headed only as far away as Henderson, and he goes down. Is that a penalty? It is a penalty. He just made it into the box. Berardi with a striker's foul. And it's going to be Lacazette to take the penalty. I mentioned he's not scored in a lot of games. I think it might be over 13 now. It might even be 14. Maybe you can get one here to end the drought. He can. It's from the spot. Maybe that's a confidence goal. It's the 100th league goal of his career. It's been a long time coming. Hopefully he can use that momentum that he's got from scoring that goal to really kind of, I guess, continue on. It's a good goal for him. Jordan Henderson, of course, winning the penalty. Keeper did go the right way, but he's hit it right into the bottom corner. And we take an early lead here against this North London club, one of our big rivals going for the title this year. And, um, yeah, pretty good start. Looking at the stats, it is very, very close, really, that penalty. The only kind of difference between the two teams. It's going to be a tough game, this one. We did, of course, lose to Arsenal earlier on in the year. This is our first time playing Spurs. It's going to be interesting just after Christmas time. I mentioned kind of... In early to mid-January, we have Manchester City and Chelsea to play. I know we have Arsenal to play not too long after that. So we've got tricky games, you know, to kind of look forward to. But our run towards the end of the season is going to be quite kind, with the exception of having to play Spurs away. I'm hoping that we can be secure in the top four by that point. In terms of where I expect us to finish in the league this year, um, obviously we're in second at the moment. We might be first with a win here if Arsenal slip up. or oh, We have a set piece. Get it in. Headed away. Can we get there? Henderson. Back to Klein. Can we build? Coutinho. 
Fred through Firmino. Henderson, oh my gosh, it's a it's a stunner. Laid off, was that hit first time outside the area? Henderson contributing massively to this game. One goal to his name, and of course he got the penalty that scores to win it. This goal though, Firmino with the layoff. Henderson just rifles it in, roof of the net. Keeper un unsighted by the defenders, and we take a 2-0 lead. What I was saying, however, just before Henderson scored, that absolute world he was. I'm pretty happy with how we're going at the moment. My aim really is still top four. We'll see how we are, kind of similar to last season, I guess, where we had a shout at the title with a few games left. You know, if we are still, you know, alongside the likes of Tottenham and Arsenal at the top of the table with 10 games left, that's when I'll start to get my hopes up. That's when, you know, serious mode kicks in. But until then, um, I don't expect us to win the league this year. I kind of saw this Liverpool team as a big project and a long-term kind of job that's why I signed so many youngsters you know in the first season and as well as this season I see this save potentially having legs as a longer term one which I didn't really expect initially I guess when I started it but I think a title win we need it really within the next three years top four has got to be the minimum I think from now onwards at, Ar uh, at Arsenal but yeah we're not managing Arsenal oh we've given away a penalty I wish we were managing Arsenal because I could do with them giving away a penalty or two Berardi can have a chance from the spot here Consigli in goal for us can the Italian stallion make a save probably not I'm gonna pray please Consigli well he's gone the right way for a moment I thought he might get there but Rarardi scores his 11th of the season and with 25 minutes left on the clock Tottenham back in this game unfortunate for Consigli really goes the right way the keeper just can't get across fast enough really hit well by Berardi and Spurs back in this game we have brought in Mbolo to play that Trek Batista role. In fact, I'm going to make a little change here. I'm going to swap around Mbolo and Firmino. I'm going to play a F in F uh, Firmino as the Trek Batista. Suits him a little bit better. Mbolo, pretty much a standard poacher, just with a little bit more pace. And so I'd rather switch those two guys around. And Zuma scores. That's a nice goal. I think he headed it off the underside of the bar. And I don't think it hit the back of the net. But it went over the line. And that is what matters. The ball whipped in by Henderson. I think it was a flick on at the near post. Was it by Sacco? And Kurt Zuma there. Heads it. Hits the crossbar. Hits the ground. And it's a goal. He hits it pretty well off his head. Sacco with a nice little flick on the French connection there. From the set piece, gets us a goal, and now we are comfortable again, I hope. Unfortunately, we have conceded here, but we have got a little record of not conceding more than one goal in a while. Firmino! Oh, that was a chance to make it 4-1 and to put this game beyond doubt. Henderson, set piece, we've already scored one. Can we score another? No, we cannot. All right, 10 minutes left. I'm going to bring on Targo Maia, I think, for Bazaar. He gave away the penalty, of course. He's looking a little bit tired, not had the best game. But other than that, I think we'll stick with our squad for now we might make a change with just a minute left to kill some time on the clock but at 3-1 this has been very very routine and very very comfortable really it's been a game that we've been doing pretty well in if i jinxed it please don't tell me i've jinxed it if we concede now then i get a little bit worried if we could score again that'd be great i'd love to see lacazette get another and that would be ideal, really. Although Spurs bringing the ball forward here, we are going to have to defend. Moreno wins the ball high up the pitch, lays it inside Maya. We've got a big breakaway here. Firmino, Lacazette, please bury it. Well, he's done it at the second time of asking for the rebound. He makes it 4-1. It's his eighth goal of the season, his second of the game. The one from the penalty spot is a good confidence booster, but with it being not from open play, you know, you have your doubts. Here he's got a little bit of fortune, but fortune favours the brave and Lacazette. Grabs another goal. We've been needing these goals for the last few games. He's now got a minor injury, so I'm going to take him off. I hope that isn't a serious injury. It'd be very typical if he gets two goals and then he has an injury that kind of sets him back. He's got a damaged heel. We will have to keep an eye out for the news item at the end of the game. But it looks like this is going to be all said and done here at 4-1. It's been a fantastic performance here by the boys. A win against one of our really, well, really our title rivals. And I'm not going to complain one little bit. We are turning Anfield into a fortress. That is a very pleasing result. I believe that puts us top of the league, although Arsenal do have that game in hand that I already mentioned. Great performance, though. Henderson getting a goal, Lacazette with two. Looking at the stance, wasn't, you know, all plain sailing and all our way, but we played very well. Sacco, man of the match. Seven tackles, one. Is that uh, 19 interceptions, 13 headers? He, he was just an absolute monster for us him and kind of Zuma have just kind of created this insane partnership they're such kind of um 
I've, I've compared Zuma's brother there. Well, that's it. I was getting really confused for a second. I was looking at Kurt Zuma's profile earlier. That's why we've got his brother. Right, there we go. There's Kurt Zuma. That makes a lot more sense, that polygon we're seeing. But these two guys, they kind of um, benefit each other and work off each other so well. If I was going to replace one, Sacco would be the one. I don't think we're going to be signing any kind of massive like centre-backs who are immediately going to go into the first team. But, of course, we do have a few centre-back prospects in the youth team who we are going to have to keep an eye on. But at the moment, these two guys have formed kind of just an absolutely insane partnership. And, well, they're single-handedly helping us out, really, on the way to doing well in the league. Anyway, please be a nice physio report. Can we all have a moment's prayer before I click on this Lacazette news item? I don't want it to be more than four to five days, please. Five to seven days. I can live with that. The Barcelona game, I think, will be one of the only games he misses. And that's a game that we've already qualified for the Champions League group stage prior to playing. Uh, sorry, the Champions League knockout stage prior to playing. I'll tell you what, we'll just continue and see how Arsenal get on against Everton. We are top of the league. If Arsenal win, they will go top. So this is one of the few times where I'm looking for the blue team over at Merseyside Everton to get a win for us. Can they do it? Can they cheer me up? Well, they've drawn. That will do me. Nil-nil. Looking at that here, we go two points clear of Arsenal after 15 games played. Looking at our remaining games in this half of the season, we have Everton, who are 11th. Uh, sorry, Everton who are 10th, West Ham who are 11th, we have Watford who are 7th, Palace who are 18th, then we're going to have a nice easy run of Sheffield Wednesday, Villa Newcastle before we have, well, should we say a fairly unpleasant run of Manchester City, Chelsea, Norwich and Arsenal. Could be a little bit easier than that. Hopefully I'll see you guys in the next episode. It will be the games against Manchester City and Chelsea, I do believe. If you've enjoyed this video as always, guys, do smash the like button. It does help me out. Uh, if you've got any comments, leave them down below. And other than that, it is me, Jack, and I'll talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out. Yeah, yeah.